Great morning. Welcome. This morning, I'm going to be teaching on Holy Communion, understanding Holy Communion. I'm going to be administrating Holy Communion, and I'm going to share some mysteries of Holy Communion. So as you're coming in, just posture yourself. Keep your mind on the Lord. Just want to take a moment to thank him for his goodness towards us. For his mercy endures forever. He's an all holy God. And he deserves the highest praise. So we're going to enter into a time of worship. So many different types of ways we can worship. And taking Holy Communion is one of those ways. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. So those of you that are joining me this morning, I invite you if you haven't already, to get your bread, use a cracker and your grape juice. I'll give you a moment. I'm going to start with the teaching, then the ministration, and then I'm going to show you some mysteries of what happens when we eat the bread and we drink the cup. So Father, we bless you on this glorious morning that you have given us. We reverence you as the God of light and in you is no darkness. We ask you to bless this time as we come together in our individual homes, but we come together to honor the only true and living God. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. So I want to start by reading 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 34. And I'm going to walk through each line. And then I'm going to explain and do some teaching and then we're going to minister holy communion and then i'm going to share you some revelation that god gave me about taking holy communion so for those of you that are on taking notes i'm going to be reading first corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 through 34 from the king james version of the bible the holy bible i like to say that for i have received of the lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, after he took the cup, which he had supped, saying, this is Jesus talking. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do this do ye as often as you drink in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and of the blood. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily 
eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. Unto the rest will I set in order when I come. So I want to start with verse 24. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. So I just wanna stop and pause. When he had given thanks, this is a time when we're partaking of Holy Communion, that we are being thankful for what the Lord has done for us. We're being grateful for what he has done the price that he paid for us at Calvary. We have to understand to appreciate the significance of what the blood has done for us. And the more we understand, the more we appreciate, God said, the more benefits we will get out of the blood. So this is a time of being thankful. It's a time of remembering. That's what he said. As often as he says, do this in remembrance of me. And it reminds me of Psalms 103. It says, bless the Lord on my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord on my soul and forget not all his benefits. See, it's so easily to forget the benefits of the blood. And what I love it, it says, who forgiveth all thy iniquities. You know, one of the benefits of the blood is it washes us away from our sins and our iniquities. It's by the blood of Jesus that we're healed, right? But if we're not careful, we can forget. That's why this, that's why this scripture is in. He says, forget not. It, it, it just amazes me. Think about this. Birthdays, you used to hear people would celebrate a day. Now what do they do? They celebrate the whole month. <laughs> oh, this is not my birthday. This is my birthday month. They celebrate the whole month. This is what they're saying. It's like, we really want to really not forget. It should not be a one year thing. It should not be a one month thing that we take Holy Communion because it's, it's a sacrament, it's a holy sacrament that will keep us in remembrance of what Jesus did for us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory. So what does commemorate? It's a celebration. We're celebrating. We're calling to remembrance what Jesus did. It's like a ceremony. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are at this gathering, are at as we're take, partaking of Holy Communion. It's a gathering place. It's a holy time in the presence of the Lord, and we're commemorating, we're celebrating. This should be an exciting time when we take Holy Communion. Glory to God. But I want to tell you what the word means here. If we look at it, when it says in, um, let me see, let me go back up here. As often as you do this, right? That means we can take Holy Communion as often as we like. We don't have to wait and take it once a year or once a month or when um, our leaders take it and they call for the taking of the Holy Communion, you can take it at your own time every single day. Amen. So it's commemorating and celebrating the death, the broken body and the shed blood of Jesus. That gets exciting to me. People get excited for a lot of things. But when was the last time we had a celebration oh, for what the Lord has done? My Lord, his hor horrific death, painful death. No greater love have a man 
given than this, I'm paraphrasing, that a man laid down his life. So we show appreciation for the blood sacrifice. We bless the Lord for what he's done. Taking Holy Communion, I want to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16 through 17. It says the cup, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 16 through 17. The cup of blessing, which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. So we can look at 1 Corinthians 10, 16 and 17. It showed us when we take Holy Communion, we're communing with the blood of Christ. We're communing with the body of Christ. Those are two different things. We're communing with them. Communion is just not talking. Communion is just not in the presence of. Listen what communion means. It has a lot of definitions, but each there's subtle differences in each one of these. I want you to really get a visual image of what is happening when you're partaking. You're in the presence you're in the presence of an all holy God. Um, oh my gosh, when I just think about it, it just tears me up. Mm. It means fellowship, association, community, communion, joint participation. Listen to this one intercourse. My God. Intercourse, fellowship, intimacy. So this. Holy communion, when you commune, that's a greater level than just talking to someone. It's like if you think of a relationship, the different relationships that we have, a man and a woman, they're more intimate. This is a very intimate, sensitive time in the presence of the Lord. So you're communing with him. You are getting into a deeper relationship and you're being very intimate with him. So you never want to engage in taking Holy Communion lightly. I'm going to talk more about that, okay? It also means if you go back, I'm just going back, it says here in verse um, six, what are we doing? We are eating of his bread, which represents the broken body, and we're drinking of the cup, which, which represents the shed blood of Jesus. Okay, so now I want to go on to this. For as often as you eat this bread, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. So how often are you in remembrance of the broken body? How often are you in remembrance of the shed blood? This says for as often as you eat it, you're showing in remembrance. Are you taking it rarely? Are you taking it sometimes? Are you taking it often or are you taking it always? All one, every one of those that I just spoke about were different frequencies. He said, as often as you're taking it, you're showing me in remembrance of me. So that means if I'm not taking it, I'm not showing him that I'm remembering the price that he made for me. What would it be like? Oh my gosh. If we only remember people, or we never remember people for great things that they've done for us, but there's no other gift better than the shed blood and the broken body of Jesus. So out of all the things we celebrate, of all the things we commemorate, of all the things we remember, don't forget the blood. Don't forget what Jesus, you're living in freedom and prosperity in your right mind. You're having a relationship with God all because of what Jesus did. Ooh, my Lord. We have to remember what the blood did. Remember the blood washes away our sins, cleanses our sins. It's for the remission of our sins. It's for the forgiveness of our sins. It's to reconcile us back to God. It's to allow us to have peace with God. We're redeemed. You have to really understand what those different, um, I call them spiritual blessings have done for us. And the more you understand them and the more you appreciate them, God says more power you'll receive from the blood. 
<laughs> there is blood power, right? We know the different power that's in the blood. But like I always say, there's measures that we have access to. And he's saying the more you appreciate, the more you'll receive power from the blood. Hallelujah. So let me talk about you do show. I love this because did you know you do show? It means that you're announcing, that you're declaring, that you're proclaiming. Every time you partake of Holy Communion, you're announcing, you're proclaiming the death of Jesus and his resurrection power. Glory to God. See, we're so used to when we announce and when we declare through our mouth, right? I decree, I declare, I pronounce, I proclaim. Okay, that's good. But did you know every time you partake of the blood, I mean, of the cup, every time you partake of the bread, you're announcing and proclaiming. Oh my gosh. He says, as often as you do this, you do show the Lord's death to we come. So basically you can substitute as often as you do this, you announce the Lord's death till he comes. You proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. You're making an announcement in the earth. And the Bible says, if you lift me up, I will draw all men unto me. Glory to God. Verse 27, this is where I really want to speak some time to, because I got an eye opener myself on this. Here we go. 27, wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup unworthily, that means how you're taking it, that's an adverb, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Let's look up a word unworthily means. Well, let me just, let me just talk about me. Let me just talk about me. When I used to like gaze through that scripture, I would think unworthy means, oh, maybe I was in sin, so I'm not worthy to take him. Maybe um, I had an argument or I have an offense like that. Unworthily, if you look it up, it means in an unworthy manner. So if you look up the word unworthy, it means lacking in value or merit, not deserving or morally reprehensible. So you don't necessarily have to be in sin, but if you don't value it, if you don't give esteem to it, if you don't honor it, you're taking it unworthily. So I began to examine, the word began to examine me because I was just taking Holy New Communion because I knew it was a, a Christian thing to do. But was I really value? Was I really esteeming? You know how the Bible says, honor your mother and your father? You can have a relationship with your mother and father. Be kind, but are you honoring them? Honor is different. Oh, my gosh. So what this means is if you're taking Holy Communion lightly, if you're taking Holy Communion without honoring it, then you're taking it unworthily. Oh, and these are the consequences. When you take Holy Communion unworthily, you shall be guilty of the body and of the blood of the Lord. Well, we know what guilty means, right? That means I'm worthy of punishment. Ah, I'm worthy of punishment, of a penalty. I have to pay a price now. That's why he says, okay, so you need to examine yourself before you partake of Holy Communion, because if you're taking it unworthily, there is punishment that comes to it. See, we cannot take this lightly. We cannot dishonor, just, oh, let me just hurry up and take it. Hurry up and just, come on, you're taking too long to pass out the bread and the wine. Come on, hurry up. Oh, watch yourself because you will be guilty. Oh, Jesus, it says 28, but let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. But he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. So what does this mean when you're going to now eat? It says, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, going to now eat and drink damnation. Damnation means a decree, a judgment. So basically, you are now set yourself up to be cursed. Dishonoring. The blood, God said, is the ultimate sin. And we know that the that there's penalty for sin. 
That's why he says you must not take this lightly. You must examine yourself before you partake of Holy Communion. God was telling me you have to be careful how you even use the name. People thought, I plead the blood and I plead the blood. You better make sure that you understand and you be careful because God says you can bring on a curse upon yourself un unknowingly. We can literally be, because see, God is bound to his word, but thank God for Jesus. Thank God for confession. Thank God for repentance. But if you don't know, he says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge and rejection of knowledge. So either you don't know or you know and you're not obeying it. So from this day forward, don't just jump up and take Holy Communion. Take it with honor, respect reverence thinking about what jesus has done glory to god god said carrie dishonoring the blood is a serious matter he said it can be deadly in some situations he says you must use the blood in the right context because ultimate sin i'm repeating myself on this part ultimate sin is dishonoring the blood of jesus I'm repeating myself because this is important because we don't want no weakly and sickly among us. We don't want nobody to have no premature death because we're dishonoring the blood. He says you have to use skill and understanding when speaking of the blood. So a curse does not come upon you unknowingly. I love that because you could be walking under curse and not even realize it. Mm. Let's talk about discerning. Oh, Jesus. Discerning. We've, we've heard of that in the context of discerning of spirits, right? Having the capability where God will allow you to uh, discern and to see and perceive activity in the spiritual realm, right? Those of you that have learned all of those types of teachings. Well, listen to what this says in this verse. It says, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. So it's possible that we don't discern the Lord's body. Therefore, what happens? If you can't discern something, then you can lack understanding and revelation, which means now appreciation of what the blood has done for you. So let me, let, let me talk a little bit about discerning. It means to separate, to make a distinction, to discriminate, to prefer, to learn by discrimination. So as you are partaking of Holy Communion, it now allows you to discern the Lord. It now allows you to learn what the blood has done, what the blood is doing for you as you are partaking it. Oh, my gosh. See, we won't know these things by our natural means. The, the Holy Communion is now going to allow you to discern the Lord's body. So now you can honor it respectfully. Oh, Jesus. It's a setup. It's a setup. God has these principles, these spiritual truths in operation to allow us to ascertain information and knowledge. One is by taking Holy Communion. Now you can discern and now you can take it worthily. Ooh, I'm going to skip over what it means um, to be weak and sickly. Right? I think everyone knows what that means, right? So I'm going to skip over that. So now I want, I want us to... Um, I'm going to administer Holy Communion. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to share with you um, some mysteries of what God revealed to me about taking Holy Communion. So when you take Holy Communion, I would read 1 Corinthians 11, 23, to 23 through 34. I've already read that, so I'm not going to read that, okay? But I just, I just want us to I'm gonna open up with a general prayer and then I'm going to I'm going to say a prayer for those of you who may not be saved, who may not accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, because before you partake of Holy Communion, you want to make sure that you're saved. And then I want to go through a prayer of repentance because we need to examine ourselves. I just walked through those, right? Because we want to have the right posture when we take Holy Communion. And then I'm going to administrate the bread and the wine. I'm going to bless it. 
the bread and the wine, and then we're going to partake of it. Amen. So, Father, we just come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, giving you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for this holy time. And, Father God, we just want to uh, pray a prayer for our brothers and sisters that may not have accepted Jesus Christ as your as their Lord and Savior. So you would want to just say a prayer, something like this. You could repeat after me. Dear God, I'm a sinner. And, and I ask you to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And therefore, I am saved. And then I want, and we say amen. And then for those that us now, it's a prayer of examination and repentance. So search me, oh God. You can repeat after me. Search me, oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And God, I pray that my whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord. And Father, I confess my sins and I'm thankful that you are faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me from all of my unrighteousness. I repent and turn away from evil. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So now we're going to take our bread and we're going to take our wine. I mean, excuse me, our, our juice, which represents the blood of Jesus. And I just want to bring it before the Lord and just bless it. So you can bless it something like this. I'm going to say, thank you, Lord, for the bread, which represents the body broken for me. Amen. And Lord, I thank you for the cup, which represents the shed blood of Jesus. Amen. Okay. So now we're going to take the bread and you can place it in your mouth and repeat after me. You're going to say a prayer. As I eat this bread, I remember the price that Jesus paid for me. And as I'm chewing the bread, I'm communing with the body of Christ. You may consume your bread. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus, for your broken body for me. Thank you that you allowed them to beat you because you had the power to not allow it, but you laid down your life for me and for them. And we give you praise. Hallelujah. Now we want to take the cup. So as I drink this cup, I remember the blood of Jesus for the remission of my sins. And as I drink this cup, I commune with the blood of Christ. You may drink. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And they went out to Mount Olive and sang. So you can sing a song unto the Lord, a sing a song of praise, a melody in your heart to the Lord. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood that saved me. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I gave you some understanding of Holy Communion. We administrated Holy Communion. And now let me share with you some mysteries of Holy Communion. So for those of you that have been following me, you know that one of the ways God speaks to me a lot is through um, symbolic actions, gestures, prophetic acts. That's just one of the main ways that he speaks to me, at least in this season. OK, so there are seasons God will speak to you different ways. So 
breaking bread, breaking bread, right? This is what the scripture was talking about at the very beginning. It says, it says up here, and when he had given thanks, he break it. Okay, so breaking bread is an action, right? Well, there's meaning to it. And there's a lot of scriptures, if you do a search, that talks about breaking bread. So let me bring some of those to your attention, and then I'm going to share what this means symbolically. Okay, the apostles in Acts 2.42, it says, and they continually, steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. So what did the apostles do? They were steadfastly in what? Doctrine, fellowship, and breaking of bread and prayer. Excuse me, four, right? I used to read that and was like, well, what's the difference between doctrine? Because that's like, you know, the law, instruction, and breaking of bread. I know they're just not eating, like taking communion. What does that mean? I'm going to get to it. Acts 2.46, and they continually daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Acts 20, verse 7, and upon the first day, this is what the disciples and the apostles did a lot, breaking of bread. So I'm going to explain what that means in a moment. I'm just giving you some scriptures. Acts 20, verse 7, and upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread. Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow and continued his speech until midnight. I mean, now that was the apostles, that was the disciples. Now let's look at Jesus. I'm going to Luke chapter 24, verse 30. And I'm gonna jump down to 31, 32, and 35. Are you with me? Are you with me? Oh, I haven't even been looking at the comments, praise the Lord. Are you with me? Okay, so Luke 24. Verse 30, and it says, and it came to pass as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break it. What did he do? What did Jesus do? He took the bread, he blessed it and break it and he gave it to them. And what happened as soon as he blessed it, break it, and gave it to them, 31, and their eyes were opened. Their eyes were closed before the breaking of the bread. But once the bread was broken, their what? Eyes were opened. Why were their eyes opened, Bible readers? And they knew him. Unless your eyes are open, you won't know Jesus. See, there's tears of knowledge, just like this tears of revelation. When you break bread, when you take Holy Communion, one of the answers is right there. Your eyes are open that you will know Jesus in a better way, in a deeper way. See, that's why it's important to take Holy Communion. Because there's some parts of Jesus you won't never know. But as you begin to break, 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 break bread daily. My God, you begin to know Jesus should become one with him. Jesus is here. How do you know? Because I know his voice. I know his steps. I know his movement. I know his cries. I know his anger. I know him. It says verse 31, and their eyes were open and they knew him. And then he vanished out of their sight. 32, and they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the wayside and while he opened to us the scripture? When's the last time Jesus walked and talked with you? You want Jesus to walk and talk with you? One way it tells you right here, breaking taking Holy Communion. That's why he says, as often as you take it, you do show in remembrance of me. 
He said, and they said one to know that did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the wayside and while he opened up to us the scriptures. You want deeper revelation of the scriptures and the word of God because we know who's the word. Jesus is the word. You want revelation. You want mysteries. See, if you go through the Bible, do a search on missions. There's all types of missions. There's mysteries of the kingdom. There's mysteries of heaven. There's mysteries of the kingdom of God. There's so many mysteries. Let me tell you what mysteries means. I looked it up because definitions help us really comprehend of what we have lack of or what we are not getting because we don't take Holy Communion. Mystery means something that baffles understanding and cannot be explained. So God has spiritual truths benefits things in the word of God that are like sealed like you have no access to it but as you begin to break the bread you now have access you have access to the mysteries you have access to the secrets you have access to the hidden things who wants to know the hidden things the mind of God the spirit has to search the deep things of God Verse 35, and they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. So this is the summation point that I want to make. Breaking bread is a symbolic action. What does it represent? It breaks off. Here's the word. It breaks off ignorance. Type that. Breaking bread breaks off ignorance. It breaks off darkness because darkness is meaning things are covered, things are concealed. But what does it break open? The opposite. It breaks open understanding. It breaks off ignorance and darkness. It breaks open understanding. It opens up doors of revelation. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Glory. So, when we're talking about Holy Communion, and I mentioned that Holy Communion is what? It's remembrance of you, of you, I'm sorry. When you are taking Holy Communion, you're communing with two things. Remember, I said you're communing with the body of Christ and you're communing with the blood of Jesus. So as you partake of Holy Communion, you're now breaking open understanding mysteries of the blood. You taking Holy Communion with the part of breaking the bread, you open understanding to the mysteries of the blood. And you're also opening understanding to mysteries. Sorry, in the blood. I'm sorry. Yes, in the blood. That's all I want to say in the blood. So there are mysteries in the blood. There are things in the scripture, if you do, a, 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 if you're a student and you take, make careful attention, you can pull out what the blood does. It talks about how it's the, it's, it's the remission of our sins. It's, I've, I've taught on the blood of Jesus and before, so I'm not going to speak on that now. It's just in your Bible through just a Bible search, just searching, just searching the word and you'll see it. But there are some things that because it's a mystery. It baffles your understanding. You're not going to see it in the scriptures. The, the, the spirit of God now has to break open so that now you can see the hidden things and the secret things and the treasures that are hidden in Christ. Hallelujah. Right. So the breaking of bread now is going to reveal these mysteries to you, but it happens in stages. So the breaking open of understanding and revelation in these mysteries it's going to happen in stages with me. What does that mean? It means it's going to happen. It's progressive. So the more you take Holy Communion, breaking the bread, God will begin to break, 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 break open mysteries, break open revelation daily. If you're taking it daily, you'll start dropping nuggets. That's what it says. Give me this day my daily bread. Daily revelation. Hallelujah. Daily rhema word, right? So. When you understand the price Jesus paid, you partake more of its power. I said that. The more you appreciate it, you receive more power. So let me talk about the blood. What happens? While you are communing, while you're communing, right? Who, 
remember, I said this, when you are partaking of Holy Communion, you are communing with the body of Christ. You're communing with the blood of Christ. Keep these two things separate. So what happens to the blood? In Hebrews 12, 24, it talks about how the blood speaks. Let me just give you a reference. Hebrews 12, 24, it says, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. So we can see that the blood speaks, but have you ever known what is the blood speaking? I know I have. Okay, I can see that right there. It says the blood speaks, but what is the blood speaking? Here we go. What does the blood speak? When does the blood speak? Have you ever asked questions? See, when you're reading the Bible, it should prompt you to ask questions. And when you ask questions, it's a form of seeking. The Bible says, when you seek, you will find. So begin to ask God questions. Don't just read and say, oh, I just don't understand that. Ask him, what does this mean? So I begin to ask like, okay, it speaks, but like what is happening? So he began to tell me, he says, this is when the blood will speak. The blood speaks to you as you commune with it. The blood speaks to you as you commune with the blood. Well, how do you commune with the blood? We just talked about that. When you partake of Holy Communion. Woo! Glory to God. So when you're breaking bread, it reveals the mysteries to you that others do not know and they cannot solve. I'll say it again. It reveals mysteries to you that others do not know and they cannot solve. I don't care how much somebody reads that Bible. It takes the spirit of God to break off ignorance and to break open understanding that they can receive and know the mysteries of the blood and to understand the blood. This is what the blood does. The blood will reveal and show hidden things you know not of. I'm just pausing because I want you to get it because I don't want to just keep speaking and speaking. I want to give you time to get that, to hear it, to listen. Don't just hear. Listen attentively so that these words can get into your spirit. Hallelujah. And you can begin to meditate and walk on and walk out on them. So the blood is going to commune with you. The blood is going to start speaking to you. The blood is going to start revealing things to you. I didn't say the Holy Ghost. I didn't say God the Father. I didn't say an angel. I said the blood. The blood speaks. Oh, Jesus. So he, he started talking about me, how the blood begins to analyze. The blood, a blood analysis. So your blood will begin to speak to you and let you know everything about your body. Isn't that awesome? The blood will begin to analyze your body and begin to speak to you and show you things that are happening in your body. See, I'm not saying don't go to a doctor, but we have access to blood analysis. We have access that the blood will begin to tell you what's going on in your body before a doctor can detect anything. See, sometimes things are going on in our body and the doctor's like, I just don't know. I just, we tried everything. See, Doctors are limited. Remember, I've been talking about faith. They're limited. They can be the best doctors, but some things they just don't know because they're limited. Oh, but the blood will open up revelation, begin to speak to you. This is what's going on in your body. Hallelujah. So the body will let you know everything about you. Sorry, the blood will speak. It will let you know everything about your body because why? There is life in the blood. That's in Leviticus 17, 14. So the blood of Jesus will begin to examine your blood. Listen to this. The blood will locate sickness and disease in your body. It'll pinpoint it. This is why this is happening to you. Whoo, Jesus. The blood locates. 
It's a locator. Sickness. Disease in your body. Let you know. Something's going on in your body. Something's going on in your body. Keep breaking bread. Keep breaking bread. Because the blood is speaking and telling you what it is. So then now you can get knowledge and information and break it. And cure it even with the blood. See, this is what the blood does. I love it. The blood has so many functions. The blood will discover sickness and disease, but it also heals sickness and disease. <laughs> the blood saves and heals and discovers what man can't find. That's the good news. He said what man can't find. They can search. They can get the best technology. Technology is always advancing, but don't you know it can never outsmart our God? Our God is the God of intelligence. He knows every single thing. Glory to God. I love how God begins to like brag on himself. He said, Carrie, man needs technology, but you have the blood. Ha! Type that. Man needs technology, but I have the blood. Man needs technology, but I got the blood. He said, Carrie, the blood builds immunity, resistance, against disease the blood as you keep breaking the bread and as you keep taking holy communion it builds up your immunity system it builds up resistance against sickness and disease and infirmity so he said prescribe the blood prescribe it so my question to you and the question god asked me what is the blood speaking to you about your body what is the blood speaking to you about your body? He said, Carrie, as you continue to partake Holy Communion, you will hear the blood speak for yourself. Oh, Jesus. I tell people this all the time. Christianity can never be boring, outdated. It's an adventure. The blood is speaking to you. I can hear the blood speak to me and reveal things to me about my body that I did not know the blood is speaking. So this is what he told me because I've been taking Holy Communion more frequently and I've been getting downloads of what the blood does. And he says, Carrie, and I'm sharing this with you because it's applicable to you. He said, you are learning about the blood and what it does for you more clearly. See, this is the, this is the thing. We never want to stop on what we understand and know about things in the Bible. We want to be teachable. We want, we may know something, but there's deeper revelation. We need more clarity. He says, as he says, you're learning about the blood and what it does more clearly. He says, you're getting a deeper understanding of the blood. Hallelujah. And he began to tell me other things that the blood does. It sets the captives free. There's freedom in the blood. The blood breaks, weakens, uplifts, and removes curses. When you commemorate the accomplishments of the blood. I just said a mouthful, so I'm going to say it slower. The blood breaks, you can type it, it breaks, it uplifts, it removes curses. When does it do it, Lord? When you commemorate the accomplishments of the blood. That's why he's saying as often as you take. Do you have any curses in your life? Do you have any curses in your bloodline? The blood of Jesus will break it as you commemorate the accomplishments of the blood. Are you celebrating the blood? How frequently are you celebrating the blood? How frequently are you taking Holy Communion? How frequently? How often? Remember, I went through them. Let me go back over. Are you taking them sometimes? Are you taking them? Where were they? Where were they, Lord? Where were they? Let me just go over them. Are you taking them rarely? Are you taking it sometimes? Are you taking it often? Are you taking it always? Those are different frequencies. I'm just giving you some, some, some things to ponder on because we always want to examine ourselves. Am I taking it rarely? Sometimes, often, always. Glory to God. Let me move on. We know that the scripture says healing is the children's bread. So healing is the children's bread. And that is found in Mark 7, 27. So as you're breaking bread, as you're taking Holy Communion, it's warfare against sickness. 
There's a warring going on in the spirit. See, you don't always know what's happening in the realm of the spirit while you're doing um, while you're doing spiritual things, while you're while you are following and adapting and implementing spiritual truths. Don't wait to get revelation. Just know that they work and God will give you understanding later. You are you are in warfare. The blood is warring on your behalf against sickness. Hallelujah. So I talked a little bit about what the blood does sorry what the breaking of the bread does in terms of the blood now let's look at what happens when you take in holy communion in reference to the lord's body so i'm shifting from the blood of jesus to the lord's body so we said carrie taking holy communion allows you to open your eyes to see and discern the lord i know it's a scripture it talks about one thing have i desired of the lord that i may uh, what is it? Psalm 2 said, one thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold, to see him. Not to know him, to see him. So what happens is it's now breaking off, it's, it's breaking open your eyes so that now you can see and discern the Lord. Remember, discernment is to detect something with difficulty. So we're incapable in and of ourselves to detect the Lord, to discern the Lord. But as you're taking Holy Communion and you're communing with the body of the Lord, now you can see him and you can see him clearly more clearly. He says, it's an eye opener to see things about Christ you never knew or understood or experienced. There are things right now in my present day that I have yet to learn about the Lord, though I seek him every day. But as I'm taking Holy Communion, it's opening my eyes that I can see things about Christ that I never knew or experienced before. That's why I get so emotional because I'm, oh, I'm, I'm being flooded with gratitude of what he did for me because I'm getting a better appreciation. I'm getting a better understanding of what you did that for me. This is what the blood does. This is what the broken body of Jesus does. My God. While you are taking Holy Communion, it purifies the soul. See, sin causes us to not see clearly or to see as clearly. But as you're taking Holy Communion and you're communing with the body of the Lord, now it breaks open so that now it, sorry, it purifies the soul. Because you remember, when we're taking Holy Communion, before we take it, what do we do? We're doing an examination, right? We're doing a cleansing prayer. We're doing a, a repentance prayer. So we're purging. We're cleansing ourselves each time we take Holy Communion. It's a washing. So now I can see the Lord clearer and clearer and clearer. So you purify the soul to see and discern more. It unclogs pores symboli symbolically, okay? So now you're able to truly see the price paid for you at Calvary. See, sometimes if we're not careful, we can devalue things. I said this before. You can have relationships. You can have friends. You can have positions. You, you devalue them until they're missing. Sometimes we cannot really value our health until we're sick. We cannot really value our, 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 our health until we you know, break a toe, a finger, and can't walk. Now we value it. Oh my gosh, I just can't see because now I can't walk. I can't do something. So we don't want to lose sight of what the blood, we want to value it daily. So now what happens when you are taking Holy Communion, your eyes are open to see the Lord at distances. Oh, I love this. The Lord draws close. No, you're now sorry. You're drawing closer now to the Lord so that now you can see him. You can see him better and you can see him sharper than ever before. Holy communion aids in all of this. This is good to me. No, I changed my language. This is great to me. Hallelujah. So when you're taking Holy Communion, you're in close communion with the Father and the Son. This is important. Listen to this. Not discerning the Lord's body till he comes is a sin. Did you know that? Not discerning the Lord's body till he comes is a sin. Wow. Wow. That means I need to be discerning, which means I should be taking Holy Communion so I can discern him. We should be daily discerning the Lord's body. This is what the Lord said. Daily discern the Lord's body. And then... 
he began to tell me about the body parts, right? If I'm, if I'm talking about the body of Jesus, he's saying you can now begin to discern every body part, every member of the Lord. That's why body parts are significant. His eyes, his nose, his mouth, his hand, his feet, his toe, everybody, every part of Jesus's body. So as you partake of Holy Communion, you're communing with the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. You now get to discern and understand and apply the body parts. That's why he talks about the arm of the Lord. You get revelation on every body part. And also I'm digressing, but this is important. That's why I tell people, the more you know Christ, the more you know about you. So then now he begin to highlight your hand, your feet, your toe, your tongue, your mouth, because you're made in the image and the likeness of Christ. But I won't know Christ. I mean, I won't know myself until I know Christ in a greater, deeper way. So God wants you to, to, to grow up. He wants you to mature in your maturity and your identity in Christ. But it only comes by the more you know about the identity and the characteristics and the attribute of Christ, which comes through discerning the body of the Lord. That was a mouthful. Praise God. But it's recorded. <laughs> Glory to God. So every part of Jesus's body is holy. Holy, holy, they're holy members. And remember this, I'm about to close up in about five more minutes. Each member of the Lord's body is holy. Each member of the Lord's body has a spiritual message and a spiritual purpose. There's so much depth in the word of God. Every member of his body is holy, has a spiritual message and a purpose. But the wonderful thing is the more we partake, the more understanding and wisdom we get from the Lord. So he said, Carrie, discern the Lord's body, his body parts and members. You would know their symbolic meaning. What's behind these practices? What's behind, not just to know them, but what's the motive? What's the intent of doing? Not just knowing what the actions mean. Because like I say, every prophetic act, my God, there's a motive behind it. There's an intent. Don't you know every miracle that Jesus, not not miracle, every healing that Jesus did when he opened up blinded eyes, each one has a different message, although they they receive their sight. If you dig it out, if you search it out, that's one of the things I'm still digging out. It's more than just they saw. There's a motive. There's an intent behind every miracle, every breakthrough, every, every sickness that Jesus restored. Glory to God. So he said, see the original purpose of healings. Glory to God. I'm finished. I'm finished. Please, please share this with people so that people can have a greater understanding, a greater appreciation of what the blood of Jesus has done for us, what the body of the Lord Jesus, his broken body has done for us. And I believe, and God is putting this on my heart, that I'm going to be coming on, taking Holy Communion on live more frequently. I don't know yet if it's going to be once a month or once a week. Because of this teaching, it has given me a greater appreciation, a greater understanding of what Jesus did. Glory to God. So I pray that this message, I pray that this teaching, it enlightened you. It gave you more knowledge, wisdom, or insight, or appreciation for what Jesus did. So as you go throughout your daily life, hallelujah, thank you for the blood. You have a greater understanding of what the blood did for you. So Father, we just bless you for this time. We thank you for this holy, sacred word in this time in your presence. And Father, I thank you for this word 
that is sent out into the places and the hearers that you want to know, because we want to daily remember and commute and commemorate and to celebrate what you have done, what Jesus has done for us. And we give you all the praise, the glory and the honor. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for joining me. And again, I will be back to administer Holy Communion more frequently on Facebook Live. God bless.